oh, I got somebody else real quick that wants to jump on. I'm like, oh, cool, yeah, let him. And he goes, hey, it's, it's Tom. Did that to me, I just remember shaking. <laughs> I was like, okay, that was the, I, I did the right thing. I made the right choice. Ethan, this mission of yours is gonna cost you. I love the beginning of the film where Ethan welcomes a new agent to the IMF by saying, you did the right choice. Uh, I, I, I can imagine you could relate that to your journey as actors, where at the beginning, perhaps everyone struggles. But do you remember the moment where you said, I did the right choice? Uh, yeah, as me, it was, uh, I think, at the premiere of Mission Impossible 3, when I went to see the movie, I, I was filming Hot Fuzz at the time, and I, I was let off early so I could go and, you know, be at the premiere and seeing this, the sheer kind of spectacle of the whole thing and realizing that I'd joined something special. Uh, you know, I, it was a wonderful moment. And then when JJ called me um, a year or so later to say, oh, we're gonna make a fourth one and ben, oh, wow. Benji's gonna be a, an agent, I was like, okay, that was the, I, I did the right thing. I made the right choice, you know, because here I am 17 years later making my fifth Mission Impossible movie and having more fun than ever. I'll tell you this story real quick. I get a text, it says, is this still you? I said, yes. <laughs> he goes, I'm calling from a European number pickup. I call and he says, he says, hey, this is McHugh, you got a minute? I said, yeah, I said, this is gonna be really, really good or really, really bad. And he goes, oh, I got somebody else real quick that wants to jump on. I'm like, oh, cool, yeah, let him. And he goes, hey, it's, it's Tom. And I remember I had to hold the phone away and I, it buckled me. And that's when I thought to myself, this is different. This is different than just yeah. saying you got a gig. Like it was, it was, for me, it was as good as it gets. To me, when it was, I was working in a theater in the north of England, it was my first ever job, and I walked back from the theater to my flat, and I opened my paycheck, and it was for 100 pounds for the week. And I was so, I couldn't believe I was being paid for something I loved. So that, to me, I just remember shaking, being like, you're paying me for this, oh my goodness, I've done it for so many years, yes. and years and years and years, hours and hours and hours, just totally for free, and would always have done, you know, because it just was a, such a love of mine, so that was like a privilege, so I thought, maybe, I, maybe I've made the right choice. Um, I think every time I've taken a theatre role, because that taught me so much about stagecraft. Um, you know, we, we, we make choices in real time, but we've never made those choices before, so we can never really predict the outcome, and there's so much that's not in our control. Um, so there, there isn't a handbook to necessarily knowing how to get things right. And I would say that I've learned more from, um, uh, you know, more tricky experiences than, than easier ones, you know, because it gave me the ability to develop either um, resilience or more insight into the kind of ways I want to work or develop into um, later on in life. <laughs> this film uh, tackles a really important theme that's AI and uh, it's a really important theme on the writer strike as well so I was uh, wondering uh, you as an actor and, and as a writer how do you feel about the subject because your character really has an important uh, scene where he buckles his seatbelt uh, after uh, he goes for, uh, for the autopilot in, in the <laughs> car so it's really interesting yeah I think you know it has to be something that works for us it has to be something that that is a as a tool that we can use not as an excuse not to do something you know we can't allow it to replace the 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 sort of crucial elements of of, of being human i think we have to remember that that there are things that we can do as human beings that you know any ai could never do it can only simulate it can't be what is brilliant about these movies is that they are always technologically adva advancing and so the the story often will, will also tap into the cultural uh, consciousness and the zeitgeist of what is being discussed, you know, in various um, sources all over the world. And it's one of the reasons why it makes it so um, exciting. I mean, it's a, it's a very, very tough and layered and deep subject. And yeah, it's, it's scary. I don't know what I can add about that. It's just, you know, yeah. it's a tough it's one. It's totally universal, isn't it? And that's why I think it was, you know, we were chatting about it this week with Tom and Chris just saying, oh my goodness, you conceived of this movie years ago and this movie is coming out at the very moment. I think everybody on the planet is feeling the, 
the eeriness or the kind of um, unknownness of, of AI. So it feels like a very real threat. And I think people are going to feel that around the world because it's not kind of, you know, it's not one villain, is it? It's a kind of um, yes. uh, a, a human created power that yes. could potentially, you know, overwhelm us. The AI gave us something to talk about in this film and it made this film yes. even better. Christopher McQuarrie is a great writer and he used that to, to, to give us something that's magical. And I can't wait for the rest of the world to see it July 12th and IMAX, Dobly, wherever, is gonna be an epic adventure for the audience members to see. And I have to ask this, is there a special welcome uh, to an actor when the, when he joins the Mission Impossible family? Yeah, uh, come in, do your stunt right now. Like start the movie, <laughs> start, the first thing you shoot is one of your stunts. That is, that is how they like, would you haze the new actors that come into the film?